John Lasseter, who is a renowned American animator, said once that quality is the best business plan. By laying stress on quality and subsequently on reliability and performance, a simple product or service can emerge as one of the greatest brands. Similar is the story of UCAM, a leader in CNC rotary table technology, where made for the world philosophy. UCAM was established in 1986 as a job shop and now offer a wide range of CNC standard and customized rotary tables, which can be used vertically and horizontally based on the application. With unceasing product innovation, cutting edge technology and proactive customer relationship, UCAM has emerged as one of the most preferred brands in the Indian machine tool industry. From production capability point of view, its machine shop is equipped with latest CNC machines, including 5XS machining centers, vertical machining centers, horizontal machining centers, CNC gear hopping machines, and thread grinding machines. And the man behind the story, Mr. Indra Dev Babu, who is the founder and managing director of the company, is with us today for an insightful discussion. Mr. Indra Dev Babu has been into the manufacturing industry for more than four decades now. And he is also the current president of Indian Machine Tool Manufacturers Association. So, Mr. Babu, it's our pleasure to have you with us today. Welcome to Metal Cutting TV. Thank you, Sachin. Thank you for the opportunity uh, for uh, inviting me today for this discussion with Metal Cutting TV. Uh, I really, really, I understood from you today about uh, Metal Cutting TV as a new concept and uh, something different and refreshing and uh, all the best to you. So to start with, would you like to tell us about your journey so far as an entrepreneur and also your experience of working in the metal cutting industry for such a long time? Talked about um, uh, my experience and as well as the metal cutting industry, my experience as an entrepreneur, I guess, and uh, also the metal cutting industry. Touching on the my entrepreneurship journey, it has been a humongous experience, believe me. It's almost, it was really thrilling, in the, I should say, because I had so much ups and downs, like a roller coaster. Uh, from, uh, from just a scratch, I mean, I started my company by quit, uh, after quitting Bharat Electronics with a very meager uh, fund as well as uh, knowledge of business. And with uh, some difficulty, uh, I started the business as a job shop. And uh, those days in 1986, when I started the business, uh, hardly there were the, the, the scenario in our country was very different. But the um, uh, demand was very small. And, uh, and, and the CNC job shop was, uh, we were one of the new, new ones down there. And uh, getting customers and jobs was an extreme difficulty. But as I moved on, uh, there were a lot of lessons to learn. And uh, I had extreme financial difficulties those days. Uh, and the issue was that uh, I did not know how to run a business, how to look at a balance sheet. I was only a, a good shop floor engineer. But that is not going to help you succeed. You needed to learn how to manage people, how to uh, go to the customer and uh, satisfy him. Uh, and then we need to learn to be also efficient in, in the shop floor. So this journey uh, led to a lot of difficulties. But uh, when it looked as if that I, it's going to you know, end uh, the, the journey, but I came out of it and uh, grew. Uh, in fact, I had a lot of difficulty, including health challenges those days. And I had a uh, story wherein uh, I was in hospital for an angioplasty. And uh, after that, there was no money to pay the hospital bills. And my wife had to beg and borrow to get me out. But from that, uh, there was a lot of learning. And, uh, 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 and then the companies moved out of this scenario managed its uh, cash flows and grew steadily, particularly from uh, year 2000 onwards, there has been no look back. The company grew from a very small uh, shed, uh, a B-size uh, unit to a, a factory in uh, Pinya, in the, sub in the industrial suburb of Bangalore. And from there, we moved to the Abbas Pet. We have a large 
a greenfield factory. We are very proud of it. Uh, so, and uh, then we have learned uh, many more lessons and we have put our place in the global map as a rotary table manufacturer of refute. Coming to the, my ex uh, experience in the metal cutting industry, yes, uh, I must go back to the first time uh, I got uh, introduced to a metal cutting was when I was uh, just out of school and uh, I think I had passed uh, 10th and there was a holidays and my cousin took me to his uh, tool room uh, where he was working and uh, I was allowed those days and I saw how a drilling machine removes cuts and drills chips and I saw a lathe removing, uh, you know, turning and chips coming out. I was amazed and from that day I hooked on to, you know, metal cutting and uh, the my natural tendency moved towards it and uh, metal cutting industry and love for machine tools grew from there. I worked in Bharat Electronics in a tool room where precision was the most important uh, aspect of it. Um, so uh, I, it's been a continuous learning uh, experience and the journey continues. I am still learning and there's no end to learning. The hum humongous uh, and a very uh, thrilling experience, I must tell you. And today, as a president of IMTMA, I really get an exposure of what is happening uh, in India as well as internationally about metal cutting. What is this industry? How big is it? What are these challenges? And how what an association can do to help its members? So this is uh, 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 my experience uh, as an entrepreneur and as a uh, uh, from my knowledge as the uh, experience of metal cutting. Sachin, thank you. Great, sir. It's quite fascinating because, you know, um, I mean, when you really have, I mean, when you have actually worked for all of your life uh, for more than 40 years on a particular concept, and then you look back and see the connecting dots. So, and then you also see, you know, from where you started, what was your inspiration, what was your motivation, and then you did the hard work and, you know, came to this particular level. So this really gives uh, someone, you know, kind of goosebumps and a and, and lot of motivation to start something like this. And it's uh, really fascinating. Thank you so much for your explanation, sir. Uh, sir, would you also like to elaborate on uh, the manufacturing capabilities of UCAM, its vision as a company, and also the proposition to the industry? Uh, yes. Um... Uh, UCAM, uh, uh, as I explained, it's a journey of development of its manufacturing capabilities. Uh, first uh, was uh, about being able to produce precision parts and uh, consistently. And then it moved on to uh, assemblies being, uh, being able to meet its designed for, uh, des uh, desired purpose. And uh, finally, it really, uh, you know, um, meets its goals when customer is happy with it. So, uh, in the journey that um, uh, I moved forward was finally uh, focusing on the customer. And uh, so, uh, in the manufacturing, you know, it's a the manufacturer rotary tables is again a purely a, a metal cutting aspect of it, but a lot of it. Uh, because the majority of the uh, of the product is made out of uh, varieties of metals and and it needs to be processed so one is about metal cutting because metal cutting is a process and adopting the right process is a, almost an art it's a science and an art and uh, experience knowledge and innovation all combine to give this result and uh, it's a competitive world and uh, you have to, uh, you know, though the, the world of rotary tables is, um, is actually a, a niche a industry, in the sense that the consumption of rotary tables is not as big as, let's say, a vertical machining center consumption or a CNC lathe. But uh, it's very, it is considered complex. The mechanisms are considered uh, intricate and complex and uh, in very high demand. And uh, the customer perceives this product as a, 
critical part and uh, reliability of the part uh, means uh, you know uh, winning or losing his business and hence he is looking at a very reliable uh, partner to give the such our product and uh, we realized this and we continued a journey to improve on a continuous basis and initially uh, initial focus was about product itself to give the product its desired performance but then we needed to be competitive and hence the process manufacturing processes stability of the manufacturing processes and cost reduction in manufacturing processes and turnaround time in manufacturing processes this became the uh, need at ucam uh, uh, i am proud to tell you that we have ultra modern manufacturing facility uh, in the new free uh, new greenfield factory which is now about 5 years old now the uh, machining facility is entirely uh, temperature controlled clean room atmosphere and uh, we have the best of machines both domestic and international and uh, uh, we have quality control equipments uh, you ask it and we have it uh, where it is uh, high precision uh, um, three quadrant measuring machines gear testers uh, profile measuring roundness tester i mean we are laser interferometer to inspect our, <coughs> our rotary tables and uh, uh, we uh, and then the uh, our team are highly skilled and the uh, Uh, the one beauty is that our shop floor team we consider them as our unsung heroes and uh, they are in our we have things they are given a lot of priority and they are highly aligned and motivated team uh, we are a very coherent um, you know uh, top to bottom highly connected organization and team so the team spirit is uh, the highest order we also look at uh, all aspects of metrics about com- commitment to customers in terms of uh, what we promise and what we deliver and we want to continuously improve on it and we are all in, the, uh, in our processes and look for gaps for improvement always uh, uh, an issue is an opportunity for us to resolve and improve ourselves you see that that that, that issue does not repeat itself uh, and the journey has been uh, Uh, humongous and uh, lately in the last few years we have started adopting a lean manufacturing culture that has further helped us a lot in terms of uh, uh, in, uh, eliminating waste and improving efficiency and uh, visitors to our factory today are extremely impressed with um, the way we uh, process our products and how we handle our products and our throughput Uh, and the, but we also you take uh, rotary tables which is a it's a big variety by itself we have a very thick catalog and we are able to deliver varieties of the mix based on the market demand we measure what is the demand for each segment of the of the of the products and tune our manufacturing uh, strategy to meet that requirement and hence we are highly competitive whether it be Uh, cost or delivery or quality so uh, we are in a, uh, we are pretty uh, proud of uh, what we have achieved but our goals is set much higher and we are continuing to innovate with new varieties of products and what we can offer to industry uh, is about um, that as far as uh you know uh, challenge we can meet any form of precision or complexity of a product because today we export our products to the most advanced machine tool builders as a as a supplier to oems we also supply very complex equipment to end users also in north america in in europe uh, uh, these are the two export destinations for us and uh, we are uh, quite uh, uh, you know i mean uh, happy with the results of our export activity and continue to uh, learn uh, from it and improve our uh, way of doing things not only 
of product and services, but the way we want to think and act, we are adopt continuously. The other thing I wanted to uh, uh, explain to you is today, uh, UCAM has other business verticals as well. UCAM has developed into producing CNC gear hoppers and uh, also it produces uh, uh, a torque uh, uh, electrical line because uh, the torque motor is a, is a backward integration of our rotary table. So the direct drive rotary tables are, uh, uses our own torque motors. And we are happy to tell you that we are the, our torque motor division has moved to supplying motors to defense applications uh, as well as a, a machine tool and now recently medical applications. So the pandemic has opened up this uh, chapter to supply uh, motors for uh, 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 ventilator allied products. Basically simulation of a ventilation device and uh, let's say a training uh, system to help doctors and nurses to uh, uh, you know how to training system for ventilators. So these are uh, motors that we ship to uh, US uh, company. So this is just to give you a, a breadth of uh, what UCAM is doing in terms of the rotary tables, CNC gear hobbing machines and uh, uh, high performance motors. Great sir, rightly said. Uh, I would say, I mean, as you mentioned that, you know, keeping the promises with the customers, very important point and you know delivering the commitments which we have already made to the customers or the end users and uh, continuous learning continuous improvements diversification at the right time finding new opportunities these all really are the points you know which leads everyone to success i would say so thank you so much for explaining sir uh, sir um, as we know that we are also you know driving through these difficult times globally uh, we would also like to understand how you and therefore your companies managing the situation, uh, keeping, uh, you know, demand drops, travel restrictions, and you know these other problems in in view. So we would really like to understand it from you as well. Yes, yes. When the pandemic uh, hit, and I was uh, extremely confused guy, and I had a almost like for a, a couple of few weeks uh, doomsday attitude that. Uh, how this? Uh, how, how are we going to come about, uh, get out of this situation? And uh, our industry uh, in India, machine tool industry, depends uh, about 60, 65% on auto. And in this scenario of lockdowns, where will be the consumption for auto? And uh, the fear of the pandemic will, uh, you know, uh, will not allow people. They'll all become very. So this was a kind of a fear that we had and the demand drop we expected will be huge. But then uh, soon we regrouped and realized we took advantage uh, about uh, uh, the uh, you know, multi-product uh, uh, portfolio that we had. But first I must come to, first uh, is the safety of our employees. The first thing that we dealt with was, uh, what is that we are going to adopt? Uh, what is that we are going to do to save and be safe? One of the things we said is, why should the desk jobs be in the factory or in the of our head office in uh, India? Why can't they work out of home? Can we try it out? And I am happy to tell you that almost most of the, not all, but most of the desk jobs are today working out of homes, even though we have the full uh, capability, I mean, full permission to work, uh, entire company to work, come back to the factory and work. Uh, we have found our unique methodology to uh, work out of home more effectively and efficiently. Uh, while there are challenges, uh, we have done this and uh, we found our uh, uh, unique uh, comfort in doing that and we have benefited from it also. Uh, so uh, the factory per se, the people who work in the shop floor and people and the few people who need to be around to support it, they are working out of the factory. But if you go, you will see that it is a very thin, uh, the normal factory would be buzzing with people and activities. It is not so. Uh, but our outputs are 
almost back in, coming back to a normal stage. Uh, but we are able to uh, achieve this with, um, uh, we achieve this by working out of home, by adopting, uh, you know, uh, eliminating waste and uh, adopting certain methodologies by which the, there seems to be less activity, but the output is good okay, during this. Actually, let me tell you that we have taken a huge benefit of the code of, uh, of the COVID. Uh, I, I am not unhappy at all about this COVID situation. I think this has given UCAM a huge opportunity to uh, jump, uh, uh, jump up in our uh, organizational capabilities in terms of better alignment, in terms of better uh, skill development, better uh, management orientation, uh, more better customer focus, and uh, also uh, focused trainings have happened, internal trainings have happened. So uh, the stress has, uh, uh, what has happened is people used to commute. They would spend at least a couple of hours, uh, you know, uh, traveling. Now, those couple of hours are becoming available to our team. And the inefficiency, because virtual working on a virtual platform is slower, but it is managed because they have more time. And uh, on the other hand, the disturbance, too many people, a lot of interactions, you know, the interactions have got minimized. People are thinking more and acting. There is a cultural shift and a change, which I'm extremely happy about. So the, we have uh, tried to leverage all the benefits that could come because COVID has hit us. Uh, so uh, and the other, from the customer angle, how we are, we are practically unable to travel. So if you're not able to travel, what are we doing? Uh, we found some unique ways to engage the customer. Earlier, our salespeople would go and sit for uh, you, you, you are a sales uh, your person yourself. You would go sit for a lot of time waiting for a team of uh, people to meet you. But you will find that um, maybe one out of three would join you. The two others would get busy with something else. Yes. But to, on a virtual platform today, you will get all three of them to work focusedly for 30 minutes. Okay. They are happy. You are happy. You are able to deliver your message more efficiently. And we are able to do that. But uh, not always, sometimes a customer likes to have a touch and feel, I guess, in the sense, get to know you a little better uh, and uh, meet with you. So there are some cases where there are meetings are happening, but practically in the South, not much of meeting. In the North, uh, I'm seeing that meetings are happening, uh, but come what's reduced. Uh, just, you know, uh, some sort of a, a feedback for you. The aspect is, uh, I was coming to service. Service is an area where, uh, you know, it's a tough challenge to be uh, able to reach. Customer wants you, you, know, you want to go, but you can't reach there. And also our teams are, people are very uncomfortable to travel sometimes. Also, the customer also doesn't like uh, visitors unnecessarily. So in this scenario, we were, we are trying to handhold as uh, a lot uh, with this uh, on this me and the on the virtual platform, and uh, solve a good number of it. And the rest of our service teams are uh, reaching out there. So with the result, what has happened? Our uh, travel, both sales and service travel costs, are, uh, we have saved on that, and uh, we have become more effective and efficient. Uh, so uh, there are lots of a lot of bright sides here, and learning this, uh, you know, remote. We adopted this uh, virtual platform experience with our international customers in terms of uh, you know working with their team uh, to uh, finalize a contract or technically freeze everything or discuss some technical issues on service matters, which they know we there is no way we can travel out there. But uh, we are able to give them that extent of support that they are able to solve it. So this is our my uh, UCAM's experience in terms of uh, how we are managing it. And uh, coming to the, the diversified product range that we are having, that also helped 
because our motor business picked up a little more in the beginning and continues to do and uh, uh, our gear hopping machine also we had some pending business that also started to happen and uh, that is uh, moving on and the rolling table business is not dead it is happening uh, not to the extent uh, uh, as uh, it, what we normally would have been but it's going and we are sustaining uh, the entire organization highly supportive uh, of the various cost saving measures and with that uh, we are moving on and we are confident that we will be out of this and uh, uh, take off thank you great sir so uh, i think you know i mean we see that there is a very high level of uncertainty in these times and uh, you know with active uh, contribution and actively thinking about what can be done you know uh, being more creative it is always better to design our own new normal instead of waiting you know what actually the new normal would be so that's that really makes sense thank you so much for the insights sir sir uh, uh, do you have any special message to share with our viewers in the metal cutting industry yes i would i would like to tell them that this is a golden opportunity don't lose it but few pointers one is look internally to improve your processes and become highly uh, competitive okay. uh, perhaps adopting lean concepts not necessarily in the shop floor but anywhere and everywhere uh, and uh, look at world as your market because the with the changing global scenario india has a huge opportunity to export and uh, the government uh, is very hopeful uh, and it is telling us that we are going to be out of the uh, this lockdown faster than any other nation and uh, i think uh, the, the opportunity is humongous be positive if this is going to end soon it's not going to be four years like the spanish flu it's going to be a little more than a year year a little more than a year when things are going to be better already uh, we all have learned how to live with the pandemic now get ready to get up and run once the pandemic is over this manas thank you super sir i would uh, really thank you for investing your time with us today and you know giving us a lot of insights which can be really helpful for many people in the industry and we also we also i mean on behalf of my uh, metal cutting tv team and our viewers i also wish a very great success to your company you can private limited and thank you so much for joining us thank you mrs uh, thank you sachin uh, all the best to you thank you for this opportunity uh, i would uh, request uh, viewers to follow metal cutting tv on uh, linkedin and youtube